Hello everyone and welcome to another painting video by Pike's Miniatures Painting. Uh, in this video I'll be doing the newest Great Unclean One kit from Games Workshop. Unfortunately I've had a flu type thing for the last three weeks so this video has been delayed by a week and my voice is probably going to sound a little bit ropey in places. As with my previous videos here's the colour conversion chart for all the paints I use into the Games Workshop range. So as you can see I've already assembled the model, I've also magnetised the arm options available. You can also do this with the head but with this um, particular one I, I just did this head variant. Um, so what I've done is I've stuffed the arms with uh, green stuff just so that I've got something to attach the magnets to. The magnets used are 3mm in depth by 5mm in diameter. The great and clean one's right arm is pretty good for um, uh, magnetizing on. It's got like a little plastic ridge already set in, in the arm which sort of aligns the, the fist to the arm joint. Um, what I did here was uh, again uh, use green stuff to make sure that the ridge lined up each time uh, inside the hand and then it sort of just clicks into place. Um, quite a clever little kit design here. I also mounted all the little nurglings for the kit on uh, little uh, cocktail sticks. So I sprayed the model black and then white from mostly above and to the fronts and sides. Um, I wanted a really nice bright white base coat so that the green layers are um, really vibrant. And again I've uh, base coated all the little nurglings separately on the, on the cork block. And then all the arm options as well are all separate. The bell, the sword, the dagger and the flail will all be painted with metallic colours um, so you don't really need to get much white on these. If you get any overspray, paint over it but the black is a fine base coat for these. first base coat on the model is made with Vallejo Game Air Dead Flesh. This is applied to all the skin on the model, the nurglings and the hands. This colour is very bright over a nice white base coat which will keep a, a nice um, green colour. Um, if you do this colour over a black you get an almost uh, brownier green, sometimes like a, with a grey tinge to it. So over a white base coat you get this uh, uh, nice vibrant colour. You can see sort of towards the bottom of the model there where it was a bit more dark, the green's not so, uh, not so colourful. I'll skip forward to the next bit here because it's a lot of green and um, it'll take a bit of time to show it all. So you can see we've got a nice solid base colour across the entire model. Um, you could do this with uh, the Death Guard green out of the can. It is a lot more green though. I quite like this colour because it's got more of a, a bone tinge to it. I apply all the first shades using Vallejo Game Air Dark Green. Um, this is in quite thin layers so you'll see the, the colour actually being shown on screen now is, is very faint. You want to do this in, in lots of thin layers, multiple passes over the model. Um, you know, you want to build this up quite slowly. If you go in with it too quickly you'll just get a really really dark um, green and you'll lose sort of any transition uh, across the model. So nice light coats couple of passes here and there. Again multiple uh, thin passes across all the nurglings. Um, just spraying these pretty much from the bottom to, to shade all of the model. Um, they do catch quite a lot of detail so these are these are pretty straightforward to do. As you can see here, when I tip the nurglings backwards and forwards, you can see the like raised highlighted areas are still the nice dead flesh colour, 
But as you tilt the back, you get the nice dark green color. This model was quite a pain to um, airbrush the layers on while doing it on camera. It's so big, um, it's just hard to like keep it central all the time. So I went ahead and just put all the base layers down off camera. I mean, you can see here, I can barely fit the model um, in shot. And if you zoom out too much, you, you just can't really see what's going on anyway. Here you can see all that nice face detail. So you got all the bright colors still on the top of his head and then all around sort of his chubby chin, nice and dark. Wanted to just put in some more highlights right at the top of the model. I used Vallejo Game Air Bone White just for sort of the tops of the arms and sort of the shoulder blades. Well, they're not really shoulder blades, but the, you know, the big sort of fatty uh, uh, top bits of the model there. These bone white highlights will be much more visible once the wash has been put over the whole model. I also put some bone white highlights on the tops of the belly and the tops of the sort of leg thigh areas as well. Although it might not look it yet, most of the green work is actually done on this model now. There'll just be some edge highlights much later on. Using Vallejo Game Air Warlord Purple, I applied all the sores uh, to the models. This is around all the guts, any sort of cracks in the skin. This is thinned quite heavily, so it doesn't come out like a really, really strong purple. Uh, again, like with the dark green, uh, multiple thin layers build it up so it doesn't uh, get too sort of you know, too dark too fast. You want a nice transition. So you can see here I've got all the open sores all done, all the ripped areas of the skin, um, any sort of um, cracked sort of weird looking bits in the skin and then I've done the same with the hands as well. And of course, don't forget the little nurglings as well. Using Terminator Stone, I dry brushed all of the sores and open areas over the top of the purple. This just takes the, the sharp edge off the purple and sort of it's it ties in nicely with the dead flesh colour, so you get sort of a natural highlight. Um, later on you can go back and re-highlight some of the more prominent areas with a bit of pink. There's a lot of great texture on this model especially around all these sores and open wounds. Um, the dry brushing really just picks out all of that and gives you the, the nice little uh, highlights. Uh, next I create a wash using Anthonian Camo Shade and Medium. For every drop of uh, wash you want, sort of five or so drops of uh, the Medium, this makes it into quite a thin uh, wash, bit bit more like a sort of a heavy glaze and then apply it to all of the green across the model and um, hit up all the um, the sores as well because it will seep into all the cracks and shade the purple for you. When using a wash in more of a, a glaze sort of manner like this 
it's important to keep sort of moving it around so it doesn't settle and pull in the recesses um, because you don't you know you've already shaded it with the dark green through the airbrush you don't want this wash sitting on top of that as well um, it just a tint really here across everything and just pick out some of the smaller details We'll come back and add more shades of these folds and the skin later on but for now just glaze across them all um, and you can let some of it settle under the folds but again like, like before don't let it pull just keep dragging it keep working the brush around so that it doesn't have a chance to just sit there using Balthazar gold I base coated all the inner parts of the weapons so the skulls on the sword, the skulls on the dagger, and then uh, parts of the flail, and of course the uh, the big bell that he uh, has an option to carry. Balthazar gold is my sort of go-to colour for putting down um, nice sort of brassy uh, base coats. painted most of the uh, sword handle with the gold base coat as well and of course the little pommel at the end which is the little Nurgle uh, symbol. I then painted the surrounding parts of the blade with cold steel and then some of the handle as well. I also painted the chains on the flail and then the blade on the dagger as well. The only bit of silver to paint on the actual model itself is just a little bit of chain mail hanging off the back of him. And be sure not to forget about the little Nurgling bros. They've got their swords and chains and flails on them as well. I then used Agrax Earthshade to wash all of the metals, so this is anything that was cold steel and anything that was Balfasar gold. I used the brown to wash all this silver instead of a black like I imagine most people normally would. Um, this is to sort of emphasise the fact that it's more of a, a worn, dirty uh, blade and then when we get all the rust on it later on the brown will tie in nicely with it. Um, the brown uh, wash also just takes all the shine off of um, off the metal and then we'll come back and re-highlight the bits we want to be shiny later on. And I wash the chain on the flail in the same way as well. I 
and then base coat all the uh, toenails and thumbnails and fingernails of the model using Battlefield Brown from P3. It's quite a rich brown, um, somewhat like the old Scorched Brown from uh, Games Workshop. I also painted the teeth on the uh, face as well. I then painted the horns uh, using Xandri dust. And now I base coat all of the uh, boils across the model using XB88. Um, this step takes quite a long time because there are a good few hundred boils across this model. I have thinned this XB88 quite a bit, which is why I'm painting over multiple times over the same boil, um, just to make sure it gets a nice flat coverage. It's quite a thick paint, so you, you do want to water this one down quite a bit. I then apply a wash of Caraba Crimson to all the sore areas across the model. So this is all the open weeping sores, the wounds, all the big cuts in the skin. And then also like the little pox that you'll see in the, uh, in the skin. I'll point these out to you shortly. So I washed all the guts and the intestines as well, and here you can see the little pock marks I was talking about before. They're just little sort of um, dimples in the skin, but just a little bit of wash um, will fill those nicely and just add another uh, colour to the model. Using Xandri Dust, I apply the first layer to the fingernails. This is literally just little lines um, to build up some sort of, sort of texture on the model. The effect we're going for is a bit more obvious on the toenails because they're quite big flat surfaces so you can see all the little lines there. And then I also did this same technique to the uh, teeth. I thinned down some Agrax Earthshade with some medium and then just washed all the horns. Again it's important to keep moving the wash around because you don't want it pooling anywhere.
painted the cloth area with scale 75 deep red. Uh, my normal go-to colour for this uh, in my previous videos has been Sanguine Highlight from P3. Um, this is a very similar colour and it also dries super matte as well so I've sort of taken to this one as my new replacement for that. I also painted the cloth on the little nurglings in the same way. So I create my own um, mix for doing the oxidization on uh, metals. I like the effect nylock oxide gives but I don't quite like the colour you sort of end up with. So I add a bit of turquoise ink which is really vibrant uh, into the mix. Um, this sort of takes away the greeny sort of faded look that Nylac Oxide gives you which is the sort of more ethereal look that people use when they do ghosts um, I think this just gives you a more a much more rich blue you don't have to be too controlled with this on the sort of skull area just sort of slap it all over and then when you come back to uh, dry brush back over with Balsar Gold you'll pick up all the raised areas anyway And don't forget to get the areas around the handle and the pommel as well. And obviously uh, across the dagger, the bell and everywhere else. Using Troll Slayer Orange I dot in all of these little uh, sort of rusted holes where the wash settled earlier. And this just sort of emphasises the rust a little bit more and adds a bit more colour to the model. Using Menoth White Base, I applied the next layer of the lines to the uh, thumbnails, fingernails and the teeth. You want to get more towards the bottom and leave the Zandri Dust previous layer sort of halfway up the nail. And you can see here I've done the teeth and then the toenails down here as well which uh, do show it a little bit easier because they're nice and flat so for the base I've used some 5mm thick cork I've just torn this into um, sort of a larger round shape left the middle bit open so we're going to put another layer over the top of it um, and then just a little bit off to the side so his foot's got somewhere to stand on the model does have quite a large footprint so there isn't really much uh, opportunity for doing a flat base and um, you might need to sort of raise it up and, and do a lot more uh, building work around it. Once the cork layers are dry I took some green stuff uh, balls and then cut them in half and glued them down to be my uh, bubbles. I use a green stuff roller to make all my tentacles and um, this is basically two flat plates uh, with uh, ridges um, already moulded into them. <clears throat> All you do is take your little bit of green stuff, um, roll it into a little sausage, um, no wider than the actual plate itself. Um, moisten the uh, green stuff a little bit, a bit of water or something because you don't want it sticking inside the rollers. Um, once it's in place, put the top part of the roller on, slide it backwards and forwards a couple of times, angling it left and right as well just to make sure you um, you get the, the whole piece of green stuff and once it's rolled out uh, simply take the top off and you'll have like a little uh, ribbed um, sausage with like quite uh, deep um, ridges in it so then what you do with it now is give it a little a sort of little gentle roll over to thicken out those ridges um, just with a just with a fingertip and then you'll get sort of a more elongated um, ridge tentacle and then this you can bend and shape into whatever you want for your base um, what I've done is 
make a load of weird shapes and then let them dry. And then what I've got here is a pile of ones that I've made earlier on that are all dry and just various shapes and then you can cut and fit them to whatever you want on your base. They're still kind of flexible as you can see here so um, obviously the green stuff doesn't cure rock hard. If you want it to you'd need to use um, something like milliput or brown stuff. So I fixed the bubbles and a couple of tentacles to the base with a bit of super glue. I've drawn around the great unclean one's footprint on the base so that I don't put anything inside the area. Uh, there's going to be no point as it's going to be covered up and also I don't want any uh, raised areas that are going to obstruct sticking the model down. And then next I use uh, Vallejo Water Effects Transparent Water which was in my previous uh, Typhus video. Um, this is like a clear um, acrylic sort of gel um, just simply to take away the texture of the base. Um, and give the, the sort of lava, goo, slime, water, whatever you're putting on there, um, just sort of a bit more sort of natural looking texture. And what I'm doing is applying it with a flat brush, and then I'm going to go back over it with like a wet fingertip just to smooth it out a little bit and make sure the bubbles are nice and smooth. So you can see here I've gone back round and smoothed off all the bubbles um, and left uh, some some little waves, like ridges in the um, in the acrylic. So you can see here I went back over and dry brushed over all the um, Balthazar gold just to get a bit more shine to it. See this side hasn't had it done, um, obviously it looks a bit more dull. And then when I flip the blade you'll be able to see the top side's a lot shinier. So you really just want it in the recesses but dry brushing it gives it that sort of more natural look. I then use Menoff White Highlight from P3 just to get the final um, highlights on all the toenails and teeth. I base coated the um, mouth, well I say mouth, it's more of the, the lip around his um, his mouth with uh, Cadian Flesh Tone. I also thinned this down to a uh, very thin glaze and just um, put some around the top lip as well just to sort of give it a bit more um, colour away from the green around the, the top of the mouth. Then wash the lip with a bit of thin down Caraba Crimson. I base coated the tentacles on the model with uh, Warlord Purple. Um, if the Game Air one is a bit too thin, just use the Game Color um, variant or give it a few layers with the Game Air. painted the eyes of the Great and Clean one with some scale colour uh, Caribbean blue. Um, I get this colour in as many of my models as I can, I, I just love the colour, it's a really really vibrant turquoise. Um, you'll see here the lips a bit glossy as well so I, I think it's, it looks a bit wet at the moment because I've just matte varnished it. Using Model Air Aluminium I went and edge highlighted all of the uh, metal across the model. 
So this is all of the sword uh, blades and the flail, the little dagger, a bit of the chainmail on the back of the model, um, the handle and some bits on the bell as well. Put some little lines all around the uh, the mouth of the uh, great and clean one using uh, squid pink. Just some just some little lines to give the lip a bit more texture. I then shaded all the tentacles across the model using the hex lichen color. Um, again, this is quite thin, so it's more almost like a wash at this stage. Just a to get the uh, the bottoms of the tentacles that are sort of closest to the model. So what I've been doing is putting the hex lichen uh, down and then using a, a wet brush just clean it off and then feather it out so that you get a transition between the um, the purple and the uh, the darker purple at the recesses. Using the same technique, I then use squid pink to do the tips of all the tentacles and then again using a clean brush with just a bit of water on feather the uh, pink back down towards the purple in the middle so it should go from a nice dark purple at the base of the tentacle to the bright purple uh, warlord color in the middle off to the squid pink at the tip and then later on I also feather a little bit of white just into the tip as well just the very very tip of the tentacle Paint all the little boils on the tentacles with Caribbean blue and then when it's dry just dot them with a tiny little bit of white. And I also painted the eyes for the Nurglings to match the Great Unclean one with the Caribbean blue as well. I then layer all of the boils across the model with a scale colour Mars orange. Um, you can skip this step and go straight to the next orange if you want but um, just building them up in the layers gets you the nice strong uh, vibrant orange because um, this one's a nice transition, nice base to put the brighter orange on top of. So I base coat the cork on my base with uh, P3 coal black. This is a weird colour that's not really um, represented in many other ranges of paints. It's it's a really off, dark turquoise. Um, I, I found it hard to match the colour in um, GW's range, so I think black with maybe a bit of turquoise in it could suffice. And using the airbrush I applied the Warlord purple across all of the uh, what I call the slime of my bases, all the um, tentacles as well.
using the hex lichen from Game Air. I apply the shades all around the bottom of the uh, the cork, uh, which would be the rocks for the base, um, just to sort of transition that darker purple into the bright mid-tone purple, which is the warlord purple from the previous layer. And then I apply squid pink through the airbrush to all the raised bubbles and the tips of all the tentacles. And again, around the edge of the base um, in places, this gives you a nice uh, transition when you paint the rim uh, black. So you've got like an almost white pink straight to black. It comes across really nice. Um, I've done a few test sprays in the middle of the cork as well. Um, you'll see there, uh, just did one. Um, this is going to be covered by the model, so there's no harm in in using the middle of it just to do a few tests. I then dry brush the entire cork area with grey coat grey from P3 followed by underbelly blue and then finally frostbite around sort of the main sort of prominent uh, edges and then I'm applying a Dritchie Violet wash just to the tentacles this um, sort of defines the ridges on them a little bit more then use secret weapon pigments dark earth to apply this around the sort of adjoining areas of the cork where one layer meets another and in sort of the sand areas to make the base look more dusty and then again this puts another color on the base as well And once all the pigments are in place, I use isopropanol alcohol through the airbrush just to seal them all down so they don't come off when you touch them with your fingers. Next up, I apply Troll Slayer Orange across all of the boils across the model. Again, this um, is quite a time consuming step because you've gone from XV88 base up to Mars Orange as a layer, then up to Troll Slayer Orange as well. For a final highlight across all of the boils, I use Cygnus Yellow. This is quite a strong, vibrant yellow um, from P3. Painted Blood for the Blood God from Games Workshop into all of the open wounds and sores. Um, this is another way to add uh, more sort of uh, texture to the model. So this one's a, a sort of a glossy finish against a matte surface. So the two extremes uh, go quite nicely with obviously the matte skin straight into the the sores. I also paint this into the little pock marks and um, put some little uh, bits running out of some of them. So if you hold the um, the sword in the shape, well, the shape, the position that it's meant to be on the model, you can apply some little streaks as if uh, gravity was pulling them down. You can see what I mean on this flail arm here. I positioned the flail in such a way that I could uh, see which way the blood would uh, dribble as it's coming out of the little sores. I 
I also applied the blood for the blood god across all the intestines as well. To add some more weathering texture to the model, I mix uh, PVA glue with turquoise ink and bicarb of soda um, into my own sort of little paste. I actually um, copied this technique from uh, Slayer Sword winner Dave Soper. Um, he's um, sort of said that it, it can discolor over time. Um, I've not actually had this happen yet. Maybe it's the glues or the varnish or something I use in it, but they've stayed the color I've tinted them and haven't gone back to a white. Uh, maybe it's the matte varnish I use is UV resistant or something. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I've not had any problems with it yet. So, obviously, use this technique at, at your own risk. It may, it may go back to uh, white eventually, but so far I've uh, I've not had it happen. Um, so, what we want to do is mix all of this. So, in there so far, there's the PVA and the ink, and now I'm just putting in the bicarb soda powder. And then a couple of drops of matte varnish as well. Uh, maybe this is what stops the discolouring. And mix it up into sort of a, a grainy paste. You don't want it too thick so that you can't actually apply it to the model but you don't want it too thin so that it just runs off the model and um, you got to find that happy medium where it's almost like um, sort of more like a weird gel paste um, you want to be able to see the texture in it as well um, I'm just putting in a bit more ink here because I put in a bit uh, too much PVA um, and powder so I need to retint it back to a darker darker blue you can see here some I've already prepared in a little pot that I've kept to one side so here you can sort of see that it's not falling off the brush when I tip it over it's sort of more like a gel um, you want to get it to this sort of consistency again this is a hard one to sort of really um, to really show without you actually seeing what the sort of the paste looks like in person um, but just apply it um, as more um, an extra sort of texture on the model around the um, the oxidized areas where we put the the nylac oxide turquoise ink mix earlier on as this dries it will um, it will shrink um, as the PVA dries in it um, and then it will just leave behind like a crusty sort of um, powder afterwards which if you've used this ink will be um, quite a vibrant blue Again, apply more of this to the um, the details around the bell, the little rivets and everything, all the symbols on it, the bits where the the handles connect as well, where, where you'd sort of see the corrosion build up. Using an orange version of this, you want to apply it to all the chain mail and bits of the sword and the dagger, which I'll show you how to do shortly. So I've done the same thing again here, except using turquoise ink, I've used Mars Orange um, to make a rust powder. So I painted all the smoke parts of the model Ultram Grey and then washed them with 
a just nylock oxide medium mix no turquoise ink in this because I want it to be that more ghosty ethereal look um, but plenty of medium because you don't want it to be too strong so I wash the horns right and flesh shade getting more and more towards the the tips of them um, I've gone ahead and painted the inner parts of the horns here just to do a quick test color to make sure it looked right uh, but what we're aiming for here is um, uh, darker orangey red towards the tips of the horns and then I've used uh, thin down druchy violet just to sort of shade his eye sockets a little bit um, some around the lip and then also just some more sores around the faces just to give him a bit more shading and definition using the same thin down druchy violet I'm just glazing um, some of the folds in his skin um, just to add a bit more of a sort of sore looking um, uh, skin tone and to also just sort of define the, the folds a little bit more And then using the same glaze I also got some more towards the bottom of the model um, just nice and thin just sort of feather it in uh, to all the little creases and folds Using dead flesh, I highlighted parts of the face. This is more around the eyes and sort of the front middle of the face, the lips and the nose, just to give it a bit more definition. Using Zandri Dust, I line highlighted all of the horns, uh, the first layer, uh, going out towards the orangey Reichland uh, flesh shade tips. I then applied the second layer of the line highlights with men off white base um, focusing more towards the center of the model so uh, more the horns that actually meet the skin and sort of the tips of the little the little horn bits that come off um, about halfway up and then a highlight of men off uh, white highlight um, just to get the the tips of the horns and then finally I just put a little bit of white on the tips of them as well just to bring them to the final point I also highlighted the Nurglings horns in the same way. So I mixed a bit of white in with the deep red to put the first uh, highlights down on his cloth. Um, again placing the highlights down on the raised areas and then using a clean brush to sort of feather the um, 
the color out so you get a nice transition and no sort of stark 50 50 highlights where it goes from one color to another color next to each other the important thing on cloth is to get a nice transition You can see here I'm just working the highlights out a little bit with um, just some clean water on the brush. It's also been quite a bugger to keep the model um, in the centre of the camera because he's so big and heavy it's, it's hard to actually keep him still um, while trying to, to get the right angles to paint with. And then mixed in a bit more white to get the next layer same procedure as before just feathering it in clean brush with just water to make sure you get a nice transition and then again the next layer a bit more white uh, up to the point where I literally dot a few of the edges um, of the cloth with pure white I then use that same mix to paint on the little sort of cross hatches these are actually molded into the plastic there's very subtle little um, uh, patterns already in the model so you can just paint straight into these I just painted a couple extra on though just to fill out some of the, the space um, and then I also painted the skulls uh, in the same way that I painted the the horns so Zandri dust up to the men off uh, white highlight so all that's left to do now is gloss all of the boils and I also just re-gloss some of the Blood for the Blood God bit just to make sure they were um, nice and shiny. I also gloss the uh, purple on the base and the purple on the model as well. So all the little tentacles that come out of the model match the ones on the base so they're all nice and shiny. So that wraps up another painting tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. The model was both enjoyable and uh, awkward to paint. Um, just getting the right camera angles with just the sheer size of the, the bulk main part of the model. Um, if I was going to do it again, I'd do the head separately just so that I could show more detail and more close-up work on that. But I uh, hope you all enjoyed it and um, all the feedback and comments and likes all appreciated. So cool. Have a good day.